Hello guys, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPUNet's video series on C++ and in this video we will be learning how to call a function with two dimensional array in C++. Okay, so there will be three different ways you can do this and we will see one by one. And yeah, if you know any other way, please comment, it will be really good to know that. So the first way is you have to keep the global information saying that my row and column will be so and so. Okay. So here is your array which contains 1, 2, 3, 4. So two rows and two columns. So one row is 1 and 2 and second row is 3 and 4. And you are passing this in this function. So first one is very simple. You will be passing this array by its name as you was doing in one dimensional array. And you will get it by declaring the size of row and column both. Okay, so this is the first way and let's quickly run this. If you will run this, your answer is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is correct. Okay, there is no problem in this code and this is the first way. Now let's go for the second way. For that I need to comment this and this is your second way. In second way, you will only pass the column. I mean, you will only write the column and you must have column in your global space. Okay, and this is row what you are passing from here. So in first case you was not passing row and column both you was having in global space but in second case you are passing row okay and column is coming from the global space and let me tell you guys you cannot skip this column here okay you cannot just write it like this okay no you don't have that option like you was doing in one dimensional array and I'll tell you why it is like that. Actually the point is when you pass two dimensional array then let's suppose we have this two dimensional array and this is 0 and 1, 0 and 1. Okay, this one value is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this is case of two dimensional and let's write one dimensional case. Let's suppose you're having these many entries 1 2 3 and 4 okay now let's discuss why this c is important you have to give the column okay but in case of one dimensional array you was free to skip this size here so the reason is you see two dimensional array like this but in computer it is still like this let me write it in computers it is still like this so 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 okay so this is 1 2 3 and 4 and let's suppose you are writing it like arr of 1 and 0 then you're selecting this position then your pointer which is pointing at this starting location because your arr is pointing at this location right the zeroth location should jump to this location okay and this location means it has to skip two columns okay so if you are not giving this c then there is no way your compiler can find that uh, i am supposed to skip two columns and jump to this place okay there is no way if you are not giving this c here and why it was okay to keep the size empty in one dimensional because whenever you give size in one dimensional let's suppose you are writing arr of let's suppose 4 and this is some 5 and 0 1 2 3 and 4 now your compiler knows very well that your size is i mean the data type is integer so it is supposed to skip these many bytes multiplied by this number okay so 4 into 4 is equal to 16 and 4 4 4 4 so it will directly come to this location but here you have to skip this full column that's why you need the column information otherwise you won't be able to jump directly okay you you just think about it you will get the answer so that was about giving only c inside the global space and passing your array like this okay now let's look at the third one in third one 
You don't have to keep any global information about row and column. Both you can pass from your function itself. Okay. And you can pass your double pointer. I mean this array is of pointer of array. Okay. So you can typecast that into integer pointer and you will get that as integer pointer. And this is the way of accessing your elements in the array. Okay. This i into c tells that how much you need to jump to access this jth location in one row. Okay. So this is the formula if you are using this kind of array passing. And I think this is really a good way to do this because you don't have to keep the global information and that is really good. But here you can dynamically give when you are calling the function itself. Okay. Because you will be knowing the size of your array when you are creating it and you will pass that here. And you can keep this dynamic by keeping R and C here itself. I have not taken care of that much. But still I think you got the point right. So this is very good way to do this. Okay. And one more thing. I forgot to mention one thing in previous video which was about how to pass one dimensional array in function. And that was like this. And I said that you can skip this size giving thing here and this is the way of doing this. There is another way of doing this. You you no need to have this bracket as well. You can just remove this bracket here and keep this as a pointer. Then also it is okay. I mean this will work. Okay. So let's just compile this. This is going to be your G++ 4.5. Let's run this. See, one, two, three. So there is no problem in this. You can do like this as well. I just forgot to mention in previous video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.